Having read and heard so much of his early success, I couldn't wait to bring two-meter-plus teenager Hokuseiho to the channel. Was he a bird? Was he a plane? Unbeatable, thanks to Hakuho's teaching, perhaps. After a two-month delay due to virus issues, we finally had the chance to find out. Yet, for all the talk of a Superman, he seemed rather dressed for the Mummy Returns on day two. The result, he confessed, of an injury suffered late February. How would this affect his defense of a 21-bout unbeaten run? Against the toughest men he'd yet faced. To begin with, very badly. Half a second behind University star Tokisakai at every step, Hokuseiho conceded the double inside grip, failed to control with a Tedonofuji style clamp, and, as his right foot drove, had momentum used against him. This was his first ever match day defeat, and although refusing to blame the injury, Hokuseiho clearly sought psychological gains by ripping off the tape. He was still on painkillers, though, and ex-Saitama Sakai Tsukahara was keen to probe those unusually fragile defenses. And not only probed, but breached them with the simplest of push and pull strategies, built upon two truly vicious throat holds. The first pull didn't come off, the second, nearer the rope, certainly did. With a first career losing score now looming, one imagines the riot act was read. Unless he makes Ozeki and writes a memoir, though, we may never know what Hakuho said to him. But his match three approach was decidedly cooler. <laughs> Although still lacking the belief to charge 200 kilo Asabenke directly, Hokuseiho was sure that under a suitable push, the man with the suspect knees would taste dirt at the rope. And in match four against ex-salaried man Asagyokuse, <laughs> we saw confidence restored, a hard tachi eye withstood, Long reach exploited, outside left clamped, hips well back, inside right secured, and legs spread nicely apart in the drive. The real Hokuseiho seemed to be back. He then walked into an intriguing clash of the giants with 6 foot 4 inch Shonan no Umi, famously concussed by his previous opponent Asagyokuse. And Sumo's tallest man withstood a very determined attack from his technical inferior, once again holding firm with outside left before breaking his foe's inside left and working the right like a young Hakuho. Such coolness under pressure set him up for the winning score in match 6, which he achieved with minimal fuss, quelling Asakoki's famed aggression by showing he can also fight outside right. His rank preserved Hokuseiho could breathe easier against January divisional runner-up Shiba, another with a Saitama Sakai past.
skillfully ensnaring the inside left in his elbow pit, Hokuseho repelled and took the belt in the same slick movement. Meeting with phenomenal Shiba strength when briefly lifted, but planting his right foot well, possibly on Shiba's left, before bending, tipping, and finishing. The youngster described that as his best sumo of the tournament, adding, I'm happy with the five wins, because I'm still slightly injured. I'll be fighting higher up next time, and so we'll work on getting healed completely, then go for the perfect seven. And so, despite being hurt, the much-hyped giant went 5-2 and two against several of the best this level had to offer. Keep this up, and he will still make salaried level by September. Or possibly before. I don't know about you, but I rather enjoyed his March show.